Today I want to talk a bit about labor mobility and its relevance to the immigration debate, so stay tuned. So the immigration debate tends to focus on, um, I'd say, secondary issues. So a lot of people focus on the possibility for immigrants to commit crimes. Um, and, you know, that might be important. Uh, the A lot of the evidence I've seen says they commit, you know, not as many crimes as native-born citizens or, or close to the same level. So... It wouldn't be the first thing I thought about, and it definitely, um, you know, I, I mean, if I was designing the perfect immigration policy, I might consider it, but definitely not the most important thing. The most important thing when we're talking about migration is the labor market. The most important thing is general equilibrium in the labor market. If people can move... They will move from places where they are less productive to places where they are more productive. So, um, and and of course that applies with within countries and between countries. So, for instance, in China, um, a lot of the growth uh, over the past few decades has come from people moving from uh, the rural areas of China, where people uh, engage in very sort of uh, often very inefficient forms of farming, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are doing basically subsistence agriculture, uh, so not much more productive than they were a thousand years ago, to the coasts of China, which are uh, highly modern and, you know, incredibly productive. And so just a lot of that growth is just people moving from a place where they have very little capital and not much access to the wider world um, to places where they have a lot of capital and high wages and they can um, produce for a global consumer market. And so that's just one example where, you know, just the act of moving makes you a more productive worker. You don't have to change anything about yourself. You don't, you know, I mean, people do change and they, people do learn skills, but, you know, just being in a place where there are lots of other workers, for instance, uh, who are complement whose skills are complementary with you, where there's a nice port and uh, ships there to carry your, you know, the products of your labor to the rest of the world, makes you more productive. Um, similarly, uh, inside the United States, if people moved from uh, cities in what's the Rust Belt, you know, uh, so the, the the sort of central states uh, that you know, used to have uh, certain industries like the furniture industry that have since shut down. They've been outcompeted by, uh, well, in the case of the furniture industry, it was competition with China that killed it. But there are, there are other, there are places that were once productive and they're not so productive anymore. And then there are cities like San Francisco that are incredibly productive, right? And the exact same person doing the exact same job in a different place often has a different marginal product. So if you are sweeping the floors at Google, you are more productive than sweeping the floors at some local restaurant uh, in Nebraska. So, you know, and I mean, that's because the floors at Google are frankly more important. You know, more there's more riding on those floors being clean uh, than there is at some restaurant because more people walk on them. Google is a very... Um, you know, productive firm, and, and if, if people, you know, if their floors are spotless, it, it has an effect, you know, however indirect on the, on their bottom line, and, and so it matters. So just the act of moving often is very productive, and I mean, you know, it's, it's analogous to uh, in capital markets, you know, if you were to if you're invested in a very unproductive firm and the firm's going downhill and everything's bad and then you pull your money, your investment out and uh, and invest in a much more productive firm, you know, maybe you, you uh, get in on um, a firm when it's going public and, you know, you provide the funds, the capital to uh, for them to expand their operations, 
you know, you're transferring resources from a poor use, an unproductive use to a more productive use. And people moving uh, between firms, but also between cities is the labor market equivalent of that. How this applies to immigration is often people are much more productive when they can move across a national border. So many countries in the world have very dysfunctional institutions. Uh, many countries in the world don't have a very strong rule of law. Uh, there are countries in the world where that are very corrupt, where it would be very hard to start a business. And if you did start a business, um, you know, you'd have to make deals with the local strongman or the local officials and do bribes and stuff. And so it's just harder to make a living and then you're less productive when you do. And so just moving to a country that has a better legal system and maybe maybe just a better climate to, to do business or to do uh, labor or whatever it is uh, can make you much more productive. So for instance, uh, you, you may have noticed in the past years, there's a lot of debate about uh, illegal immigrants coming over the the border between Mexico and the United States and it's no wonder they do that because they some of them can earn 20 times more you know so a Mexican woman uh, in Mexico earn you know if she's low skilled earns 20 times more if she just steps across the border and can do some work in the United States um you know and so yeah that's not 200%, that's not 20%, that's 2,000% increase. And so people are willing to risk life and limb for this because it's such a huge benefit. And the thing about that is, from an economic standpoint, she is correcting a problem. If someone sneaks across the border into the United States and then earns 20 times more, they are correcting a problem. It's no different than an investor pulling funds out of an unproductive firm and putting it into a productive firm. You're taking this asset, which is human labor, and you're applying it more efficiently to producing output for consumers. And if you are a consumer, if you buy the goods that are produced by people who, who um, move, who immigrate, then you're gonna face lower prices. And, you know, facing when we make consumer prices lower, it's exactly equivalent to making everyone's wages higher, everyone who buys those consumer goods, right? So, you know, if $5 buys twice as much, um, then my earning $5 is equivalent to earning $10 if it would only buy half as much, right? Uh, as five, right? So it, okay. It's the amount of goods you can purchase that matters for your standard of living. So, uh, for instance, I, th this is going off on a tangent, but there's a lot of debate about Walmart because, oh my goodness, they don't pay their their um, workers enough, right? But of course, communities that have Walmarts, uh, I don't think Walmart is perfect by any means. Uh, I think that a lot of uh, public city planning policies tend to subsidize uh, that business model, but in any case, communities that have Walmart face lower prices. There's downward pressure on prices, both from because Walmart itself is cheaper and because it competes down the other prices in the area. And Walmart has, you know, thousands of consumers for every employee, right? You know, the, if, you, if you've ever been to a Walmart, there's a few people working the till and a ton of people shopping, and that's just, you know, that's just at any given time, if you go through a whole day, you know, there's there's dozens of employees and thousands of shoppers. And so if you are, uh, you know, talking about Walmart and talking about its effect on people, the relevant thing is the effect on the consumers. It raises their standard of living. Everyone in an area that a Walmart go comes to can have a higher standard of living because they can afford more. So similarly, Immigrants create goods. Uh, they, you know, they would create goods in their home country, but they would be much less effective at doing so. And so there's more consumer goods on the market when we let people move. And, you know, economists have estimated general equilibrium models. You know, if we let everyone move, and this again is just considering the equilibration in labor markets, if we let people move 
from places where they're very um, inefficient to places where they're very efficient, we could double world GDP. There's a huge range of estimates because, of course, this is very speculative. Uh, it They range from about a 50% one-time increase in GDP to 150%, so, you know, average, double, uh, approximately. And so, if you let people move, they can be more productive. In general, people move to places where they can earn a higher standard of living. There are lots of other reasons people move or don't move, but that's one that is economically relevant and tends to be a driver of these mass migrations when we see lots of people moving uh, from country A to country B and very few people moving the other way, it's probably because they have more opportunities in country B. So that's the main economic issue when it comes to migration. People like to argue all about cultural things. There is the issue that immigrants can compete down the wages of certain native-born laborers who they comp compete with directly. So a lot of low-skilled Mexican immigrants can be bad if you're a high school dropout in uh, America. And similarly, a lot of neurosurgeons coming from Iran can be bad if you're a neurosurgeon. But if you like to buy the products produced by low-skilled workers or neurosurgeons, then that's good for you. And if you're complementary, your labor is complementary with their um, their uh, output, then that's also good for you. So, for instance, if you're a g really great manager and suddenly there's a flood of, of low-skilled workers and you're great at managing low-skilled workers, that, that can increase your income. So, and then, of course, if you are someone who sells goods to immigrants, now they have a much higher... Earning, they have much higher earnings from being allowed to move to a place where they're more productive, and so, you know, they, so it's not just that they affect the supply of labor; they affect the demand for goods and therefore the demand for labor. So, uh, there's always multiple effects to this. In general, with any policy, some people will be hurt and some people will be helped, but the cost of there's a social cost, economists call it a deadweight loss, to preventing people from moving. There's a loss to society that is a loss to some people that is not offset by any gain to other people. Uh, so most economists support immigration on, on this basis. People like to argue about the other things. People like to argue about cultural issues and assimilation and that. And those things can be important. I'm not denying that. But the primary issue is that labor markets work better when workers have the freedom to work where they are most productive.